Hi, this is Dave Somerville, original lead singer of the Diamonds, on the Bill Pearson Show. Bill Pearson talking to Diamond Dave Somerville of one of rock and roll's pioneer groups, the Diamonds. Dave, if you could just tell us a little bit about the early days back in Toronto and, you know, coming into the United States and well, getting into the whole rock and roll scene. Sure, sure. Well, we uh, the Diamonds started pre-rock and roll. I, I had sung in a quartet in high school. Mm -hmm. That my, uh, my uncle Dick was my high school music teacher, and he, he did the arrangements for us. And uh, those guys didn't want to sing professionally. So I got a job at the CBC as a radio operator, and I'd been there a couple of years, and I was looking for some other guys to sing with. And uh, one day in the hall, quite by coincidence or accident or serendipity, I met three other guys who, who liked singing a lot, so we decided to form a, a quartet to emulate our favorite groups. What convinced you that going the rock and roll route was the way to go? I mean, you could have been another four lads or, you know, four freshmen or, the, you know, you could have had probably a lot of what we would call middle of the road type hits back yes, in those yes, days. Yes, you know? we could have been, and we could have been a, you know, a letterman or a freshman kind of group. But uh, this was the kind of material that was presented to us and it was indicated uh, to us. We didn't really have control of the choice of our material at that time, that if we sang these songs, Mercury had the facility for distributing and promoting this this product. So first thing you know, we were an established act right. as as a rock and roll group, which didn't make the other three guys in the group very happy because we had been very democratically set up, and uh, you know everybody took a shot at singing lead. But when rock and roll came along, I had sung lead on the first one, so it, because of the sound identification, I suppose we kept doing that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so now, when you finally did leave the Diamonds, was that an amicable <clears throat> break between the group, or did you just all feel you wanted to grow in different well, ways? Well, different, different guys left at different times. Here's, here's, a, here's a picture of the group, for instance. Um, uh, this is Phil Levitt, and this is Ted Kowalski. This is the guy who named the group. Mm -hmm. And these guys decided in, in uh, 59 uh, or so that they'd like to leave the group, and so did Bill Reed. So they were replaced with three other guys. So they were around for the first eight or so hits and then the next three diamonds uh -huh. were around for the last eight okay i got you that's uh there we are 40 years apart 19 uh, 50, 1954 and uh 1994. i just kept waiting for walking along oh yeah merry way <laughs> yeah yeah that was it thanks that was one of the diamonds best records i thought oh i thought that was a great song that was uh, fats domino's band we flew them up from new orleans uh, to New York City and uh, King Curtis played the, and it was the same session as The Stroll. Oh, all as a right. matter of fact, yeah. But there are many, many diamond songs that we could just go on and on. Uh, I do have one more question I've got to ask you, and I think you kind of pretty much halfway answered it during the concert tonight. Was there any animosity back in those days when white groups such as the Diamonds were covering these rhythm and blues songs, you know, like Silhouettes, you know, the Rays had their song on the charts and well, you had your version? Uh, no. But our attitude about that was that this, uh, we were a, a catalyst of sorts uh, to bring uh, more black inspired music to whiter audiences. Mm -hmm, right. And a lot of black uh, artists consider themselves performers for white audiences. But it seemed very obvious though uh, in the comments you made during the concert that the black performers in your group and the other white groups, they all, they all seem to get along very well oh, together. Sure, you know? Yeah, we all sang together on the, on the bus. I mean, that thing about, that I told about Chuck Berry taping the bus driver's microphone in the on position so we could have sing-alongs mm -hmm. is exactly uh, correct. We used to, you know, a song we used to do over and over again was uh, I, I Like It Like That. You remember that oh, song? Oh, sure, like Chris that? Kenner song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. It was an interesting, uh, interesting bus tour. Uh, we never we never checked in at any of those uh, bus stations. We just went from hotel to hotel, so the, uh -huh. the aisle was just full of garbage. I remember uh, on one occasion Chuck Berry, we stopped at a Dairy Queen somewhere, and he went down to the far back of the bus and he just kicked all that garbage all the way up to the front, and to the bus driver's consternation, just kicked it out in the parking lot of the Dairy Queen to, yeah. to make a point, you know, so that he'd have to clean it up and put it in the garbage. 